Hello everyone and welcome to Watch Complications, I'm Brian. This really isn't a review video, it's more of what I would call a head-to-head. -head. I have two watches, specifically two sort of dress style chronographs, and I'm trying to decide which one I'm going to keep. So what you're going to find in this video is sort of a compare and contrast between these two watches. One of them is a Christopher Ward C3 Malvern, Make 3, and here's a look at that watch. I've had this one for a couple years really like it. It's dress style. I'm going to give you a bunch of up-close looks at both of these watches, macro view and sort of just regular video. And then the other watch is a new one that I just picked up during uh, Black Friday week, Thanksgiving week. And this is an undone vintage Killy. This watch has been out for a couple years and they had a good deal. I didn't want to pass up. So we're going to compare and contrast these. It's really going to serve as like a mini review for the Undone because this one is new to my collection. I've not reviewed this C3 before, but again, I've had it for a long time. I'm not sure if it's shown up in any of my videos. I know it's been on my Instagram feed a couple times. And it really is going to be hard to choose between these two watches. As we get into the specs and the details, you'll see we've got sort of a Mecca Quartz versus a Quartz. One's Swiss, one's Japanese. You know, one's got a date, one doesn't, one's got sort of a classy dress, one's vintage dress, but all these different things. But at the end of the day, they are sort of both sort of this general dressy chronograph style with the sub dials at 12 and 6. And so, you know, you really can't, they're hard to compare. You know, one's sort of this art deco style, one's, you know, again, like I said, sort of a classy dress. But these are the two chronographs. These things are going to go head to head. So we've got the Christopher Ward C3 Chrono and the Undone Vintage Killy. Let's take a close look. Okay, one thing I really like about the Christopher Ward is the clasp that they have is so nice and easy to use. Love that. I've got the strap here. I'm gonna put this on my other wrist. There we go, one on each wrist, gonna go head to head. I've seen people wear watches on both wrists, but usually one's a mechanical and one's like a smartwatch or something like that. But this is a whole different ball game. I need to time a bunch of stuff. I'm in a humorous mood today. If you have a particular preference, I'd love to hear about it in the comments between these two watches or anything else you'd like to add. Also, you know, think about subscribing. If you haven't, what? I have no idea why you haven't. You better do that. All right, so let's take a little bit of a closer look. I will give an overview. We're gonna talk specs. We'll put on the macro lens and get a really up close look. Right now I have the Chrono running on the Christopher Ward. That way I can show you a little bit about the chronograph with a little bit more visual of the hands and how they work. So anyway, let's start with the price first. So the Christopher Ward is about $450 if you get it on a strap. This was like $455 brand new. Or if you get it on uh, the steel mesh bracelet, it'd be about $100 more, $550. But you can often find these in a sale for around $300. So again, full price, $500, give or take sale, around $300. That bracelet that this comes on is a mesh bracelet, which I don't like mesh bracelets that much. But it's got a, a butterfly deployant clasp there, which is, you know, nice, simple common design and you know it's a really nice for a mesh bracelet it's extremely comfortable to wear I'm just not a huge fan of the look of mesh that's me I much prefer the strap now one thing that's really nice about these Christopher Ward uh, straps that come on their dress line is they have what they call the Bader deployment um, I've got it separated from uh, the strap at the moment so I can show you the watch a little closer but it's a really nice intuitive design, makes it really easy. So you put this in here and closes real quick and easy. I like the Bader deployment quite a bit. It's really cool um, and pretty smart for dress line of watches. And then for the Undone, this is $270 new. Again, I got it on sale for about 200 bucks. I will note that this is one of their special custom straps. So kind of keeping this pro cons list in your head, the Undone has the advantage on the price being about on average half the cost of the CW. Now, in terms of the style, they're both dress style, what I would call dress style. Of course, the Undone has the vintage look. The Christopher Ward is sort of more of a classy, classic dress style chrono. Of course, mostly uh, silver white tones with those blue hands which looks really smart. And then you have sort of the same idea, the same notion, just with the vintage looking dial, which is the 
best shade of yellow I've seen done on a an artificial vintage dial. And so they've done really well with the, picking the exact right shade of uh, yellowish aged color for the undone vintage Killy. And then another note about the the undone is that it's got the Art Deco style on top of it. That being, you know, noted with the hands as well as the sort of Art Deco architectural look on the side of the case. So sort of Art Deco style vintage look, but both nice dress style watches. So the case specs, the diameters are right in the same range. The CW is 39 millimeter and the Killy is 40 millimeter. So normal sort of dress style, you know, 40 is good on, on almost about any wrist. And in terms of the height, of course, with a dress watch, you want to be slim so it can slide under cuffs and things like that. The height on the CW is 11 millimeter, so it's got a nice slimness to it. Now, the Killy is advertised at 12 millimeter, but when I measured it, it's 13 and a half. So I am not sure if they were maybe talking to the top of the case is 12, and then you get another millimeter and a half with the, the crystal, but they say, you know, including crystal, I believe, on, on the site, but this is 13 and a half. So this is a little bit taller. It's two and a half millimeters taller than the CW. And you can really, you can see it when you look at them side by side. It's obviously got more height to it. So this one's gonna slide under the cuffs a little bit easier. It's a nice smooth dome on this one, whereas this is sort of your double dome look. So it's a little bit of a difference between the two. Again, sort of watch the advertising um, around watches. You never know if, if those are exactly right, but I measured them myself. So 11 height and 13 and a half height. In terms of the lug to lug on the CW, it's 45.75. And again, the case is a little bit bigger on the Killy, so the lug to lug on this is 47 and a half. Not a huge difference, you know, it's it's less than two millimeters, but this case has got a little bit more lug to lug and a little bit more height. In terms of the width, the lug width, they are both at 20 millimeter. In terms of the weight, the Christopher Ward is uh, quite a bit heavier. It's a little bit more of a robust movement, I would say. It's giving some of the extra weight but also I think the case um, still in design is a little bit better on the Christopher Ward. It also, what goes into play with the weight on this is we've got a solid case back on the Christopher Ward and I went with the exhibition back. So if you get the solid case back on this, it's gonna be a little bit heavier. So the Christopher Ward is 72 grams and the Killy is 57 and a half grams. So this has a slimmer profile and a little bit more weight this has you know a little bit higher profile but less weight again what's really interesting about putting these two head to head is by the time you list all the pros and cons they are about equal there's there's these great pros on each side and and uh, you know it's gonna be, it's hard to choose it's hard to choose one thing i don't talk about as much when i do reviews is warranty but christopher ward has an awesome warranty it's a five-year warranty it's really implemented as a as a four-year warranty but they've got a multi-year warranty on the cw this is sort of more in line with the standard which is a one-year warranty some you know, companies have a two-year standard but this is a one year so you do get a much better warranty with the cw in this case but the movement's one of the areas where there's significant differences but again those pros and cons sort of you know work on each other so the christopher ward is a swiss movement the Killy is a Japanese movement. Okay, so that's one big thing. This is the Ronda 3520D quartz. Okay, so it's a regular quartz movement. Again, it's the Ronda 3520D. The Killy has the Seiko VK61. This is a mechanical quartz, sometimes, you know, denoted as mecha quartz. And this is just your regular old standard quartz. Now, what's the difference between those two things? On this movement, it's that the chrono seconds hand is implemented with the extra sort of sweeping motion, not the small seconds for the main timekeeping. So you'll notice there, that's your normal sort of quartz tick going on there. But you'll notice when I start the chrono that this hand, the red hand, has more of a sweeping motion to it. So that's what's the mecha quartz part of this movement. Again, the VK, the Seiko VK61. 
Whereas on the Christopher Ward, you notice the small second also at six, just that regular old tick for quartz, and then the same on the chrono hand. And actually, I can go ahead and start this and show it to you. So you'll notice it has what looks like more of a mechanical flow to it. Not near as smooth as a truly mechanical watch, but certainly more so than that. All right, let me stop that. And here's another interesting feature, which I'll talk about in a second. Click. Something else that's different about the movement, and let's talk about these subdials. So they both have you know regular timekeeping with the blue hands. Of course, this has more of a, a deeper blue, again, adding to that sort of vintage feel. This is sort of more modern. But we have small seconds at 6 o'clock for both of them. Another difference between the two movements is that the CW, this Ronda 3520D, has the date. No date here. Again, you know, pick and choose whether you like that particular complication for the style of dress watch. But, you know, big difference. But we both have small seconds at 6. Uh, we have the date, which is a pro here. In this case, it balances out the dial. It'd be a little bit unbalanced if there was a date here. But in terms of the chronograph functionality, this has a 60 minute chrono, so it's a one hour chrono, okay? It doesn't have any sort of split functionality. You've basically got, you know, uh, the scales around the side if you wanted to do sort of more precise timekeeping. Whereas the CW has a much longer chrono function. So you can see there's two different dial tracks here on the inside of this sub dial. We've got minutes on the outside. So there's an outside 30 minute hand and you can see there's a hand, let me zoom in just a little bit. There's a hand right there, just flipped to 20, right? The chrono seconds got up here to 12 o'clock and the minute flipped from 19 to 20. And then you have another smaller hand. So there's two hands on the sub dial. So it's 30 minute on the outside and then it's hours on the inside. So the Killy has 60 minutes, one hour. That's the max time you get. Chris Reward has up to 12 hours. It'll keep track of half hours uh, at a time and then move the smaller hand. You can see they're just past 12 on the sub dial. So this has uh, a lot more time keeping ability. It doesn't have those sort of, you know, telemeter tracks and things like that around the outside. But, you know, again, this is sort of your vintage style versus your more modern style. So you want to time things for longer, CW is the way you should go. Sort of back to the cases, they're both domed. Again, they say that the CW is, is double domed, and, but it doesn't have that double domed look to it. It's nice and curved, very subtly so, whereas the vintage Killy truly has that double domed look to it. Again, in the style of, you know, 50s, 60s style dress watches, but again, sort of one of those pro con things the cw is sapphire and has ar coating the killy doesn't have ar coating and it's a hardened k1 crystal so this is a mineral crystal and this is a sapphire what does that mean this has the potential to pick up scratches a lot more easily now hopefully you wouldn't have it in a lot of situations to pick up a lot of scratches being a dress watch but this crystal is going to show a lot less signs of wear over time whereas the K1 crystal will. Now it's hardened, it does a little bit better than an unhardened mineral crystal, but still that's a big difference between these two. And it's also gonna be the same mineral crystal on the reverse. They are both 316L stainless steel, so stainless steel all around. The depth rating on these, water resistance is pretty standard for dress. They're both three uh, ATM, so 30 meters, 100 feet, basically, you know, a little bit of splashing they can take. Now, in terms of the accuracy of these movements, they're in the same range. Uh, the accuracy on the CW, which has the Ronda 3520, is minus 10 to plus 20 seconds, while the Seiko VK61 is minus 20 to plus 20 seconds. They're not going to lose or gain much time, if any, over the course of a year. Sort of normal along with everything quartz. So in terms of the plus plus, what's the standout differences between these two? Again, the CW has a date and the longer chrono function. The Killy has the mecha chrono look about it. And 
The other thing about this chrono is it's a flyback. And what does that mean? So I've started the chrono, right? It's counting, doing its thing. It gets around to 60. Uh, this hand will go up by one, but let me stop it. So I've stopped the chrono. And then when I set, hit reset, it's a flyback, meaning it just instantly snaps back to 12. No sitting around waiting for hands to kind of circle back. So it's a flyback. The CW is not a flyback. So this chrono has been running. The hands are there. So I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to hit reset and watch what happens. Notice that the second's hand snaps back. But in terms of the hours and the minutes, it has to basically scroll all the way around to reset and get back to everything at 12 o'clock. Now, not a huge deal unless you wanted to time things in very quick succession that weren't related to each other. So you got all the way back and then stopped. But also what that means is whenever you do start, stop, and reset, that's more draining on the battery over time. So if you're timing things a lot and in quick succession, this is not the type of chrono you would want for that because it doesn't have a flyback and because it has that long duration. So there are some advantages to having longer, but there's also some advantage to having shorter and having a flyback. So mecha and flyback, longer duration and date. Big differences between these two movements. So again, going over this overall list in our head, price, the Kili wins, okay? Now that's because there's a little bit more value here with things like, okay, this is sapphire, this is mineral crystal. This has customizable options. You can customize the hands. You can get these in different styles and colors. I went with the standard blue for the main hands. I got a custom red hand. It, by default, comes with the same blue. But you can get different shapes, styles, colors of hands. You can choose to have solid or exhibition case back. Again, that's one of the big differences on this watch is you don't very often see an exhibition case back on a quartz. But if there's a quartz movement to do it on, these uh, mecha quartz movements are the place to do it. You know, it's interesting. It's nice to be able to see and showcase that, hey, this is a watch too. Show us some of those workings. Let us look at the battery. This is, you know, implemented in a very nice, classy way. And you know what? It's, it's interesting. I like showing off movements sometimes, my own watches. So this is, this is nice. In terms of the overall case specs, the CW wins because it's got a little, little bit more of a slimmer profile. Definitely um, pulls off that modern watch vibe really well. If you're going the vintage route, of course, you're going to go with something like the Killy. But in terms of you know size and proportions, this has it. This has a little bit more of a design aspect because it is Art Deco in terms of the case. The movements... They've got their pros and cons. I've gone over those, right? We've got a date here, longer duration. Here we've got flyback and, and mecha quartz. So, you know, the movements are, you know, it's really hard to choose between those two. Both have the small seconds at six. So, you know, they're both good all around. And then when it comes to accuracy, depth rating, all that, all that's kind of the same. So which of these is better? I don't know. Let's take an up close, up close look. You've gone to blur. I just want to give you a, a brief up-close look at these, though, and just show you sort of from the quality side of things. I love the case design on, on these C3 and, and also their C1 cases. CW does really well with case design. So you can see it's got a nice slim profile, subtle dome on the crystal. They've got their twin flag motif stamped into the case back. Christopher Ward. Stainless steel, three ATM. Of course, this is Swiss made, serial number. They've got the crown uh, stamped with the, again, twin flag. I like the pushers on the C3 better than the Killy. Killy has more of the, the lower cost, sort of older, cheaper look uh, with the pushers. But, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an okay design. They're not awful or anything, but they are not as sleek as these pushers. Just a style I like better myself. And we've got sort of a nice light shade of blue. You can see there is some subtle tapering on the hands, which is nice. Of course, these look anything from silver to black to blue sometimes, depending on the light. You can see as I transition there. Um, all of the chrono hands, seconds, the 30 minute and the hour hand, and then the sub second for the main time are all silver. 
We've got the date there. You see there's some layers and depth to the dial. Kind of curves away at the edge. The marker's down. You can see there's some lines in the dial to help, you know, give some definition between different regions of the dial. The date cut out. Nicely done. When it comes to CW, not everyone likes the logo. There at nine, or sometimes the font, but you know what? I'm cool with it. Look at the buckle. Clasp, I should say. It's brushed and polished both. Kind of like the case. Some of it's brushed, some of it's polished. So nice contrast there between those two things. Quick release. And again, they got their logo and name and everything else, different places. Cordovan leather, extremely soft and comfortable. So that's a little bit of an up-close look at the CW. The dial is extremely crisp and not a flaw on it, actually. I've looked at this one a lot up close and nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. Nice, classy, modern dress watch. Now the Killy, again, they've picked just an excellent shade of yellow to give that vintage look, sort of what you would get if it was sort of naturally aged almost. Now they've got that double dome going on, so whenever you transition between different views, you'll see it playing funky with the printing toward the edges. That's okay. So you've got the different tracks, the red on the outside, which is why I've got the red second hand as a customization matched with it really well. Okay, it's for timing distance and speed and those sorts of things. In the case here, same thing, transitions between brushed and polished. Again, that sort of art deco, architectural look to the case. The hands look black a lot more often than blue, unlike the CW. CW looks blue more often in more light. It's just a darker blue. Feathered hands. Again, you can get different styles. This hand is also blue. Again, that's the seconds for the main time. Again, nice subdials, printing spot on. Don't see any issues with it. No, you know, weird little specks of dust or printing errors or anything like that. It's nice and crisp. I'm a big fan of the Art Deco numerals as well, uh, particularly for sort of a, a more vintage style design. I have a Vario Silver Empire that also uses Art Deco, and I, I really found that I like that font and style with watches for, you know, simpler watches. The back, again, it's got the etching on the outside, much like the CW, which has, you know, water resistance and name and you know, stainless steel, so on and so forth. And a little bit closer look at that movement. So again, the VK61 is a Seiko movement. No jewels though, but it's got that Mecha Quartz look about it, made in Japan. And you can see all the things for, you know, resetting, removing the crown, etc., etc. It's nice as you can see what battery it needs without even uh, getting into it if you needed to you know replace the battery so got the number for the battery right there i do like the showcasing of the quartz movement it's just it's different you know it's one of the things that makes it unique for a quartz watch so there we are the stitching on this i really love the the cloth material and the stitching they've done on this custom strap. Really interesting and different style way of doing things. The buckle here, brushed as well, and they've got their logo there. I guess I didn't show you the crown. It's got the U undone on the crown there as well. Both have this sort of same style of design on the crown. Very much in line with the fact that they are dress chronos. All right, so that's an up close look at these things. What am I gonna do? So Brian, Brian, Brian. We've got the Christopher Ward C3 Malvern Make 3 specifically. You know, it's a modern looking dress chrono, beautiful watch. And we have the undone vintage Killy, customizable. It's got the Mecha Quartz flyback. You know, the, ugh, I love this strap. But 
Well, which one? Which one? Yeah. You all know how I feel with this sort of thing because if you're watching this, you're probably a watch nut too. And it's like, what do I do? I don't know which one. I want both, but I don't know that I really need both, right? They're not, you know, this one's not getting worn that much. 